You have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I always like sharing a story that I can relate to. I feel more comfortable and I love to connect with the topic. Unfortunately, today, I would like to share a story that I wish I didn't have to go through personally. But I must admit, it made me stronger. Madam President, like many others, I have been a victim of domestic violence. My story began in the year 2000. I met a man and thought we were going to be together forever. Little did I know a decision that I made some 21 years ago will be something that I carry with me forever. <clears throat> Madam President, I thought, that, I thought I met the man of my dreams. We were going to conquer the world, just him and I. In the year 2002, just two short years later, my life would change drastically. I found out that the man I loved was stepping out on me. For me, I was done with the relationship. I ended the relationship, and a few minutes later, I was chased into my bathroom with a machete. I was beaten severely with the flat part of it. I remember when the officers came to my house, one looked at me and said to the other officer, she looks like a beat up rag doll. 80% of my body had welt all over it. Madam President, I knew we could no longer be together. I had never been assaulted in my life. A couple of months later, I had a knock on my door. With tears in his eyes, he wanted to talk and apologize for his actions. And yes, Madam President, I let him in to talk. This ended up being a huge mistake. This decision changed my life forever. I was beaten with a ratchet. I was raped continuously. I was tortured for hours. And I was scared from the inside out. After hours of being held against my wheel, he let me go. And when I was free, I called the police and he was arrested. But you see, Madam President, I thought my abuse would stop. Boy, was I mistaken. He intimidated my younger sisters, following my youngest one to school. He had his brothers do the same. I felt I had no other choice, so I dropped the charges. My family urged me not to, even my the prosecutor at the time, but I wanted it to end. He promised that he would leave the island, and I, believe, and I believed at that time I was doing the right thing to protect my family. Madam President, a couple of nights later, he broke into my house while I was asleep. He dragged me out of my bed. I had my hair pulled out. I was beaten, stabbed, and would still that night I would die. He broke me. I begged for my life, and I knew he was stronger than me, and I couldn't beat a knife. I just wanted it to end. But you see, Madam President, one thing that played over and over in my mind while these horrible things were being done to me was the look on my parents' face finding me dead. I almost gave up, but I knew at 23 I wasn't ready to die. Madam President, I no longer wanted to be his victim. I wanted to live and I was going to be a survivor. After almost nine hours of torture, I was finally free. I made it to my dad's house with blood all over me. My face scratched up and I was broken. He let me go because I promised I would leave the island with him within two days. When my dad told me, Madam President, he couldn't even look at me. He jumped on his bike without a helmet and left. While I waited for the ambulance to get me, I laid on the ground, wondering where my daddy went, my hero. My daddy left looking for this man. By the time I was in the ambulance, my daddy returned. He said, Lindsay, where is he? I explained where he could find him, which was a few minutes away. My dad hopped on his bike again. The police followed him. My dad, still riding without a helmet, saw this man crossing the street, jumped off his bike, and it was busy. It was still in the morning. People jumped my daddy, wondering why this crazy man is jumping on this man. 
He was able to escape and was on the run for hours. The police did everything they could to protect me. I was in police protection. And Madam President, I have been asked on more than one occasion, how can an ex-boyfriend or boyfriend rape you? He was someone you're used to. A lot of people didn't understand. But I say, Madam President, the answer will always be the same. I said, no. No one has the right to take advantage of you. Touch you when you say no. We have to change the mentality of some. We are not anyone's possession or property. We must teach our daughters that they can always say no. Madam President, when it happened, I couldn't understand how this happened to me. But sitting back and reflecting, the writing was clearly on the wall years prior. I didn't realize that our relationship was built on him controlling me. I thought he loved me and he wanted to know my every move. I thought it was the sweetest thing. Little did I know, he made me his possession. When I decided to stand up and leave him, he lost control over me, which made him lose his mind. He always knew my weak spot was him and he played on it. Madam President, this time I continued and pressed charges. Carrington Mahoney was my was the prosecutor in my case and Inovan Crossan. They did an amazing job. He was found guilty and sentenced to 14 years in prison, which in that time was unheard of. I remember seeing the newspaper the next day and it had a picture of him because I gave up my right to anonymity. And it had his picture and his face and the headline said, the face of evil. The night that he raped me the last time, he spilled his guts and told me everything. I wasn't his first victim. A vi another victim died at his hands that wasn't in Bermuda. So I knew that night when he spilled his gut, I, guts, I was gonna die. But I continued to fight and beg for my life. Madam President, it breaks my heart to see that another family is having to bury their daughter Sadly, women are getting abused daily. Madam President, I am pleading with our women, our sisters, our family, our friends, and the community that mental, physical, and emotional abuse is never okay. We need to be there for our women when they are crying out for help. In some cases of a domestic violence, there might be elements of mental health issues. Many people are ashamed if their child, partner, or friend exhibit signs of mental health. Most mental health disorders can be treated with intervention, medication, or both. We need to actively work towards removing stigmas related to mental health and treatment. Madam President, the pandemic has been difficult for most of us. Unfortunately, domestic violence is on the rise. This government has stated time and time again that if you need help, call 911, 211, or the mental health hotline at 534-1111. Bermuda has some amazing helping agencies that help individuals that are going through domestic violence. Two of the most well-known agencies are the Center Against Abuse and the Women's Resource Center. Madam President, I have never been afraid to tell my story. I didn't get into all the gruesome details today, but every scar on my body is a reminder that I must do my part to continue to tell my story. Madam President, I don't know if Senator Simmons remembers but many years ago, she invited me to tell my story to students at the Great Barclay Institute. I will never forget the look on Mr. Leilo's face when he heard my story. He said, Lynn, in his deep Jamaican accent, by God, girl, I always looked at you as an innocent student that just sat in my classroom. But Lynn, you are strong, continue to be strong. And he thanked me for sharing my story with his students. One evening, I was invited many years ago by Ms. Vickers to tell my story to a group of middle-aged students at Spice Valley. After I told my story, to a, my story, a young girl came to me at the end and explained to me how she was getting abused. She was only 13. I guided her to get help and to speak to her parents. Years later, she came to my job and reminded me of that night. It changed her. She was able to seek the help she needed. 
Madam President, I also told my story to a group of men that had been abusing their partners. Shockingly enough, I witnessed these growing men cry. At 23, I could have been their daughter. I have told my story countless times in hopes that it can do one of three things. One, to keep people aware of domestic violence. Two, so that people are not ashamed that they become a victim of domestic violence. And three, for abusers and victims to stop and seek the help before it's too late. Madam President, we need to continue to raise our daughters that, that abuse such as physical, mental, and em emotional, and yes, financial abuse does not equate to love. If someone loves you, you should never intentionally hurt someone or be abused by them. We need to raise our young men and, and women to value themselves and their partners. I also want to point out that abuse can be a woman abusing a man, same-sex couples with one abusing the other, or pe parents abusing their, their child, or even a grand adult abusing their parent. Our seniors have also been victims of abuse. Violence against another person should never be tolerated. Madam President, we need to be the voice for the voiceless. This could be my family member, this could be my friend, this could be any of us. And Madam President, this was me. But Madam President, one life lost to senseless violence is one too many. Madam President, we need to remember the names of those we have lost to domestic violence. So today I say, I am Sheena Trott. I am Ruth Beans. I am Shakia DeRiza. I am Denise Evans Wilkinson. I am Marcus Gibbons. I am Lene Braun, and I am many others who have lost their lives to domestic violence. Let their lives always be remembered and never be in vain. My condolences goes out to the parents and families who have ever lost anyone to domestic violence. No one should have to go through this. Madam President, I would like you and anyone who hears my voice today to remember my name. I am Lindsay Simmons, I am a survivor. <clears throat> Senator Lindsay Simmons, I want to thank you for sharing your story. And I'm sure on behalf of all the senators present and all those listening, that they have been touched by your, your story and um, the candidness in which you have shared it. I have worked in mental health myself for some years, and so I am aware of some of the issues. So I thank you on behalf of the Senate body. Would any other Senator care to speak at this time? 